Hello, Sales Nation. I'm Will Barron, host of the Salesman Podcast. And in this video, five of the world's leading sales and business experts share their thoughts on how we can eliminate fear from sales. Let's jump right in. So some people, they already have the mindset. And my favorite language is the mindset that it would be silly not to ask. And once you're at that point, then you're, you're good to go in terms of the first step mostly not completely because we can't be so we don't want to be so arrogant as to just assume that just because we're showing up and doing our job that we've earned it why because everybody we meet have different expectations of what good is and people don't recommend business as usual i mean they're only going to recommend you just as you think of your own self you don't recommend your dentist because they give you a filling or your estate agent because they sold you a house when that's what you you know paid them to do in the first place so you, you have to exceed people's expectations in their own mind which isn't and this isn't really an aside but is something if you're not doing already is worth doing when relevant in your industry to you know find out what have people's past experiences been with people in your line of work because that way it sort of sets the bar have they come in have they come to me because they're unhappy or actually did they have fairly decent experiences in the past they just you know but it, but now they're they're talking to me so part of that's what is what is you know earning it is how do you what needs what do you need to do to exceed the expectations and i don't mean you know going wildly above and beyond it's just you need to you know you, you need to have that starting point one tool that can help you now again this may or may not fit with every industry but the concept does which is having uh, either a written agenda or at least one that you can verbalize and talk through and to indicate i think almost no matter what you do in sales to indicate that before you wrap up with your time that day with that person you'd love to get a little bit of feedback uh, because it's occurred to you haven't asked in the past uh, for, for feedback and that, that so the softest way to get into the referral conversation is I think through the feedback route because then if you hear good things and they're and, and you can tell that they really mean it that they're not just being polite then you have a green light to say well it would be silly of me not to ask you about other people in your boat or uh, colleagues of yours and so on and so forth and again there's a better way to ask than that but that would be at least now you've got some transition wording yeah. <laughs> if you can get if you can get away with a written agenda i would urge you to use one either by simply putting the word feedback on it uh, i would not recommend putting referrals on an agenda um for many reasons um but if you do want to put something that indicates that you'd like to bring up the subject my favorite wording today um is something like putting others i can help question mark where you know it's a very soft way to say before we wrap up it would be silly for me not to ask you about other people i could help i do believe that people who are successful definitely are equipped with tools on how to get through challenging emotionally situations they just they just they have the tools they know how to do it people who can't get through it people are who are held back by their emotions they're, they're not going to be successful also in business but also in relationships they'll just be held back because they don't know how to deal with people who trigger them or who upset them who who aren't perfect who say the wrong thing you know whatever it is if we're constantly pointing the finger at somebody else and we don't know how to take care of our own selves and our own emotions then we won't be successful in life. So I don't have, I can't give you any hardcore research or evidence of that, but I firmly believe it. If you don't make an effort, you will, you're not going to be able to change your attitude. You won't be able to, to change your beliefs, you, nothing. It won't happen naturally. It's just not the way that we're wired. We're wired the other way, right? We're wired almost to get stuck, not to get unstuck. So to get unstuck, we actually have to make the effort. So Definitely, you need to make the effort. At the same time, I would also say that, yes, we need to be in control. Yes, we need to make the effort. But at the same time, I guess it, this is also a matter of like faith and belief. But for me, maybe it's like 95% uh, making the effort and taking responsibility and feeling in control. But there's like a small percent that's like, Shira, you're not entirely in control. And, you know, things, uh, other things might be happening or can happen or will happen. Um, and I think that's, it's important to, for me at least, it's important to, to remind myself that I'm not, I'm not entirely in control of things as much as I think I am. And as much as I think most people think we are in control of our lives, things happen, you know, natural disasters happen. And I think it's important to keep that, uh, in mind and, and not to get too stuck on, I don't know, self-righteousness or, or something like that, which could lead you to a, a, another stuck place. So many of us talk about stress and anxiety it's almost popular or or 
or fashionable to talk about stress. I'm so stressed out, I'm so stressed out. But the fact of the matter is when you dig inside of that stress, it's couched in fear. And fear, to me, is an emotion that's driven by a belief that there's something that can hurt you, right? That's a very broad, I mean, you can drive a truck through that definition. But this is idea that inside of my head, I have certain experiences. I, I tell my audiences, you know, I ask them, what do, you, what do you see with? And they say, your eyes. I say, no, you see through your eyes and you see with your brain and you see with the experiences and the interpretations that you made over time. So I have in my head a set of experiences that creates true fear or good fear in my life. I get bitten by a snake. I know snakes are dang dangerous. Snakes are really dangerous. And then more than that, much bigger than that is all this fake fear, all this false fear that I created in my head. And its sales is just rife with these. I created this belief in my mind or this sensitivity in my head about how things might turn out. And the reality is that stuff isn't real. The salesperson who's afraid is the person that goes into the pit and hasn't figured out what am I afraid of? What's the logic of this game? What are the rules of this game? When somebody says no to me, it's not about me. You know, just all that stuff that I'm sure we'll get more into. But it's like, what is going on inside of the game? And people who are fearful are usually people that are standing on the edge or outside and haven't figured out what are the dynamics inside of that game. And what is it that I'm bringing into that game from a personal perspective, from a psychological belief driven perspective? And what is it like we wink, right? I wink at you, Will, and I say, oh, yes, that this is the game. I see what he's doing. Aha, that salesperson's saying no. That means I have to contact him again three, four, five times more because I understand the game. I understand that this may not be the right time. I understand that he may not have the budget. I understand that. You know, all those things. The person who freaks out and runs is the person that doesn't get the game. So jumping right into fear, I mean, the, the major thing is the actual fear of selling itself. See, most salespeople aren't confident in their sales skills. I was reading a study, actually, funny, Will. I was reading a study by Daniel Pink. I don't know if you know him, great author. And uh, he said 27%, 27 to 30% of sales professionals feel that they have fully mastered the fundamental of sales. Meaning you're leaving about 70% of people who aren't sales professionals. You have to understand they must get nervous. They must get afraid. They might get hesitant to do anything relevant to sales, making a phone call, making a cold call, selling face-to-face, -face, sending off a prospecting email. And really, I mean, before even think of fighting this or thinking of techniques to fight this fear, you have to be specific about what you're afraid of. And I think, you know, when most people think of the concept of selling, selling its fear itself, you know, what's the first word that comes to the mind? What's the first word? It's pushy, annoying, hard, aggressive, uh, manipulative, persuasive. And the problem is there that it's not that person's fault. That's the first concept that comes to mind. But you know this better than anybody talking about the psychology of sales that your subconscious is formed through the age of one to 18 years old. Meaning when my mother told me, you know, don't go talk to that real estate professional or don't go talk to that car salesman because he's sleazy, he's pushy, he's aggressive. That's in now my sponge of a subconscious. Subconscious, very powerful, 30,000 times more powerful than your conscious. So now when I go get a sales job, who do I think I am? It's all these make-believe fears that, hey, I'm a pushy person now. You know, I'm manipulative, I'm sleazy. And, you know, that's what's going to hold you back from selling, right? So here's the problem. When you believe in these fears of selling from a young age, the first thing is you do anything but ask for the sale. The words rarely come out of your mouth saying, you know, are you ready to buy? Do we have a deal? So you're basically like, a, you're, you're an explainer for your product rather than being a cheerleader, or you simply just feel wrong when you think of the idea of selling somebody. You think it's like beneath you, you think that it's unethical, it's wrong, or even you start to shy away when the conversation turns to money. You start to hesitate. When it, times, when it comes time to ask the customer to make a purchasing decision, you start to shy your head away. When in reality, well, this is just normal business practice. I go to Costco, I go to Walmart, the cashier comes up to me, 
uh, $1.87 for the chocolate bar. She's asking for money. The moment I were, it's easy to ask for money as a cashier. If I were to take that cashier and place her in a sales job right away, her psychology changes because her subconscious was formed that, you know, the, the ideal serious person is pushy, sleazy. And now when it comes time to ask for a dollar, it's difficult because she's like, oh, I'm a salesperson. Now it's difficult. Fear is a wonderful thing. Fear is an enabling thing and fear is an empowering thing. The problem with fear is when it starts changing how you're going to behave, when it starts uh, debilitating you. The coolest thing about courage is everybody gets scared. The private in World War I to the Navy SEAL guy at Mogadishu. Every one of those guys had the exact same fear. It's just what they decided and chose to do about it. Fear creates some really wonderful uh, hormones and pheromones in our body. Those things make us very acutely aware and make us hone in and be very focused on what we're trying to do. Adrenaline is a hell of a drug. One of the greatest things about fear is you have to embrace it. You know, like I know when I get shot at, I'm going to be scared that I'm going to die. I know that when I got blown up on countless times, I thought I was going to die. You know, when you get out of a helicopter and you, and you see muzzle flashes and you hear bullets snapping past your head, that's scary. But it also made you focus. You know, when I'm walking out to the UFC octagon cage and, um, you know, people are screaming your name and, and you hear your song that you've walked out to before playing loud over the speaker, you're scared. You're about to walk out there and some dude's going to try to punch you in the face, knock you out or choke you unconscious. So, but it gives you a focus. And if you, if you embrace that, it gives you a clarity and it gives you a level of preparedness that, um, that you couldn't get elsewhere. So one, you need to embrace it. You need to recognize it, but most importantly, you have to overcome it. 